Hey guys, what's up? It's cool. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Oh my god, it's October. I'm so behind on so many things, and, um, uh, my, uh, episodes here are no exception. So, yeah, um, into October, you know, I wanted to do some, because of Halloween, some horror-type stuff, and I want to get into that, but I'm backed up. I have some September stuff to cover, so hopefully I'll be more productive over the next little while and make up for some lost time. Okay, so I said, um, last time, um, when I did the Daredevil, even though I'm glad I did it, it wasn't really the time I wanted to do it. I wanted to go out, uh, you know, get away from Marvel and superheroes and stuff like that for a little while. So I wanted to do, you know, something. So this is going to be a manga episode, and I hope um, fans of manga aren't too disappointed that I didn't really go too off the board, really. I didn't, you know, pick something obscure or maybe not a lot of people know about. This is what I decided to go with. Uh, it was Naoke Irasawa's 20th Century Boys. Here we go. Obviously, I'm not doing the whole series. It's a very long series. It's uh, 24 volumes. The first 22 are called 20th Century Boys. The last two are 21st Century Boys. There's a reason for that. And so I'm only going to cover the first two volumes, which is all I've read, actually, and also because um, I think that's all I could fit in anyway. Okay, so um, I'll just start by saying I'm absolutely fascinated by this. Um, it's I just cannot wait to get my hands on the next volume. So I'll try to explain it a little. Um, Naoke Urasawa, of course, he's a really big deal in Japan and among manga fans over here also. He's done a lot. Of, uh, he's been in manga since uh, 1981 when he was a pretty young man back then. And he really broke through in the mid-90s with... Um, with his uh, work, Monster, which I believe is uh, following a, um idealistic uh, so sociopath. And um, that started around 1995, ran to 2001. Um, for the last two years of that, is starting in 1999, he also he began 20th Century Boys. Which, okay, I'm going to try to figure out... Oh, the title comes from uh, the song 20th Century Boy by uh, English rock band um, T-Rex. Uh, it uh, was released in 1973. Urasawa, there's, that's going to come into play in this a lot. Urasawa himself, he was born in 1960, so, you know, he was a kid in the late 60s, early 70s, just really influenced by music and the pop culture of that, this of that time and that era, and that shows up a lot in these books. Okay, um, before I get right into it, I will say, just those of you who don't know, uh, I know when I did my other manga thing, I showed UMW, and I said it reads like a novel. I didn't actually explain it the way I wanted to. <laughs> what I meant was, it was just simply... Uh, the way we read books, it was it presented in that format. But anybody who reads manga knows that even over here, it's presented in um, uh, the way that um, that uh, manga reads and, and things read over in Japan. Uh, sorry, uh, and that would be um, right to left, top to bottom. So this is not really the front. Here's your front, and so well, yeah, this is your front, and then we start, and so we have panels. Okay, and so uh, right to left, top to bottom. I'm too crossed up to do that from here to explain, but I think you know what I mean. Um, I've been reading manga for about eight or nine years now, and even I, you know, if I haven't been reading it for a few months, it takes a little while to train your brain, but once you get into it, no big deal, no problem at all. You, you'll, you'll do it just fine. And like I said, um, it's something you really want to train your brain to do because there's a lot of great manga out there. Just like in the world of comics... You know, there's just so much now, even over in North America with manga, the boom coming in the late 90s and into here. Um, you have to sift through a lot of crap to get to the good stuff, and hopefully I'm, you know, trying to show you some of the good stuff. So anyway, so this is about, uh, take, what another thing I love about this uh, series is it does something that some of my favorite books and um, stories do, is that it jumps around in time a lot. This makes it quite complex and layered, and difficult sometimes to follow, plus they're always introducing a lot of new characters, so it jumps around in time, there's a lot of new characters, there's a lot to keep track here, you think you might get swept away and confused, but I don't know, I, I, you know, I always worry about this every time I start a book like this, and before, you know, before long I'm right into it, no problem. So this, um, mostly takes place in 1997, but like I said, it jumps around, it'll flash back to the late 60s, and it's mostly centers on a character named Kenji, who is in his late 30s now, and he uh, run, owns and runs a convenience store, it used to be a liquor store, that was in his family. He runs it with his mother. Um, he's also taking care of his sister's ch young baby. <laughs> young baby. He's taking care of his sister's baby. Um, the sister's whereabouts are whereabouts unknown. She just showed up one day with the baby, they had no idea, and begged them to take care of the baby, then promptly disappeared. And that's what's going on there. Obviously that's going to be important later on. So, uh, Kenji, um, in the 60s, grew up and had, um, you know, um, like a lot of boys, had had a close group of friends, they were a little bit of a gang, like, um, 
and uh, they love to, you know, reading comics and listening to music and, you know, doing all that stuff that boys do. And um, another thing this reminds me of, sort of, is um, one of my favorite books by Stephen King is the, the book It, which is about a group of people who were friends when they were kids and then they don't see each other and then as adults are brought together again um, be, uh, to do something and it, it's all tied up to what they did when they were kids. And there, that's, that's something that's very similar going on here. So Kenji has his circle of friends that are still, um, this is right in Japan, that are still in Japan with him and then uh, there's a few that aren't there anymore. And what really kicks off events is uh, one of the friends that they sort of lost contact with was this kid they always had called Donkey. And uh, his apparent suicide. And that seemed really strange to them. And then um, go after going to the wake and the funeral, uh, Kenji later receives a letter that was sent to him by Donkey before he died. And nothing about the letter indicated, you know, that he wanted to kill himself. And the most... Uh, fishy thing about the whole thing was in the letter he didn't say much but he said do you remember this symbol and he shows him a symbol here and can you see it there see it it's there several times three three times on the page there the hand with the with the eyes all within the eye and that is a, and he asked him if he remembers the symbol now we find out that this is a symbol that one of the group came up with to be the the symbol for their little exclusive club of these kids, um, just while they, you know, just all in fun, making up stuff and having a good time. And he had mostly forgotten about it, completely forgotten about it, but he starts to remember over time, and um, they start, and he just, over time, it's all about, while well, all this stuff's going on, and we're seeing flashbacks and things like that, uh, Kenji's starting to piece things together, because other strange things are going on. There's this cult that everyone knows about that doesn't seem to have any name, that is run by somebody only called the people only recall, uh, refer to their leader as their friend. And um, it's very shady and mysterious. A lot of people, you know, have family members that are in it and they want to get them out of it. And it's quickly revealed that that symbol is the only... The group doesn't have a name, but they're identified by that exact same symbol. So it's looking more and more like somebody from Kenji's gang back then must be the leader. And I won't say any names or anything like that, but there is a kid, a character, who is not present so far in the first two volumes and in the and they seem to be really trying to make it look obvious that it must be him so I don't know what to think at this point you know is that just how they're going to go or is this just all red herring or something you know just to just to throw us off I don't know it, another great thing is this is definitely a big mystery and I love that kind of stuff um, when I've talked about Naoki Urasawa he's not just a writer he uh, writes and does the art um, I never know how to comment too much on the art but one thing I can say is um, I really enjoy the facial expressions of the people in this. I think he really gives a good sense of emotion on people's faces. This is just random. I didn't pick it because I thought it had great emotion. Uh, that's Donkey with my finger right there. That's Donkey as a kid. He was a bit of a loser. Uh, they're being picked on by these fat twins that are supposed to be very evil. <laughs> um, yeah, so this jumps around in time. It, it, like I said, the present is 1997, but we're even shown some stuff supposedly in the future. Yeah, um, it's and anyway, it's all understood that something very terrible does happen on the eve of the 21st century, and that they are going to try to stop it. But um, in these first two volumes, they're only really just getting their heads around what's going on. And like I said, there's these, there's also a rashes of disappearances and deaths that you know must be linked to the cult, and it's all very um, vague at this point, and, and they're just piecing it together. Um, and um, people, yeah, like I said, some people are, seem to be dying of a very mysterious, maybe, disease. They, they just seem to be bleeding out, just almost um, randomly. Of course, it's not random. Um, yeah, so like I said, there's lots of 60s stuff going on here. Urasawa himself was born in 1960, so a lot of stuff that shapes this and shapes the kids is, um, they talk about the Rolling Stones, the moon landing, uh, Woodstock, of course, um, the Cold War that was going on. <laughs> Remember that? The Cold War going on, you know, <laughs> 60 years. But, um, yeah, I didn't get to say everything I wanted to say about it, which is too bad. And, um, all I can say is that, um, if you like, you know, like, mystery stuff, and, or if you want to jump into manga or something like that, this is a complex story, I can tell. It's very long. I've only got the two volumes. But I just find it absolutely fascinating. I can't wait to see what's going on. I really, really enjoy the characters. I really enjoy... Um, like I said, the way it jumps around in time, it's not that confusing. It's actually, to me, it makes it more layered and interesting. Urasawa is a great, great storyteller. I've, I've read some other of his stuff. I've never actually read anything complete. I'm going to read this whole thing. And uh, you got to check it out, is all i got to say. All right, I'm running out of time. I'll check you out next time. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Cole. See you later. Peace.